fabulous. Thank you so much for having me. And I've heard that you guys have had a pretty cool day with a whole lot of different topics. So I'm excited to share with you about something a little bit different, maybe something that you're not used to investing in, and that's residential assisted living. So thank you, Tammy, and our Royal Legal Solutions team for having me here. We're going to be going through in the next 30 minutes or so how to start, own, and operate your very own residential assisted living home. So let's get into it. Why is right now good timing for senior housing? I mean, we look around at the economy and inflation and all this crazy stuff going on, and it doesn't really feel like good timing for a lot of investment strategies. But for residential assisted living, the timing has never been better. And that's because the baby boomers have been driving the economy for the last 70 years. And this is your final chance to take advantage of the trends that they create. It's their final wave goodbye, right? They're not in assisted living yet. Currently, it's the silent generation. There's about 47 million of them. But the baby boomers, they're coming. They're 10, 20, 30 years out from needing this. And there's 76 million of them. This is a huge opportunity. The world looked very different in 1950 than what it's projected to look like in 2050 or 2060. There's two big differences in, in this little video for us here. There are more millions of people alive than we've ever had before. It went from being a triangular shape to being rectangular. We just have more humans alive on planet Earth. But then also that 85 plus demographic, it's the fastest growing demographic on planet Earth today. What we're talking about with residential assisted living is disrupting the senior housing industry. It's kind of like what Uber did to taxi, what Airbnbs did to hotels. We're saying no more to these big commercial facilities have to be the only option out there on the market. There's something else. There's something better. And you'll probably like it more. You've just got to come check it out. So what's going to change this year? You know, COVID changed a lot about our lives. Tammy, Liz, and I were talking about that before we all jumped back in that now we're on Zoom when back in the day we used to be in person, you know, hugging and, and greeting each other there in person. And now we're doing so many things virtually. There is so many things that are going to continue to change over the years. And we can drive ourselves crazy thinking about that. But sometimes I like to bet on the opposite end. What's not going to change? You see seniors aging and needing care, mom or dad needing help, that's never going away. When money gets tight, you pull back on luxury items, those extra vacations, that Airbnb that you usually stay at for the week in Florida, you're probably not going anymore if it's a year where, hey, let's pull back, money's tight. But stopping paying for your loved one's home care and assistance, that doesn't happen. You don't just pull back on your loved one's housing and food, right? This is a necessity item. Think Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Our company motto is to do good and do well because you can make a lot of money in this industry. You can, and I'll go through that with you. But I also want you to know that there's a really big impact component, heart component. You know, for us, our journey began with a phone call. My grandmother fell and she broke her hip and the doctor said she's going to need 24 seven care and help with activities of daily living. What are you going to do? And many of you maybe have faced this situation in your own family's life. And you come across this point where you say, do we get them in home care where I have a caregiver come in and take care of them 24 seven, which can be incredibly expensive. Do we, you know, uh, get put them into a home do we take care of them ourselves nothing really feels right it doesn't feel good none of the options that are out there and so that's what happened to us and we had to look for an alternative and we stumbled into residential assisted living and never looked back you know I might, I always say that I guarantee you're going to get involved in senior housing one way or another, because at the end of the day, either you're going to be lying in the bed, writing the check for yourself or a loved one, or you could be owning the real estate and the business cash flowing, and your loved one could be living for free. This will affect every single one of our lives. Today, I'm going to show you the three smartest options to participate in residential assisted living. But who am I and why should you listen to me? Tammy gave me a beautiful introduction. I'm the COO of Residential Assisted Living Academy. 
I was named top senior housing influencer under 30 by Globe Street Magazine. I personally own and operate three of these REL care homes, and we invest in about 50 across the country. I'm the lead educator at Residential Assisted Living Academy. I was named future leader by Senior Housing News. And over the last seven years, I've been working hard building eight companies. I did most of this alongside my father. You know, he was a legend in this industry known as the godfather of assisted living. He passed away in 2021, October, and we had a choice at that moment. You know, he'd been featured in magazines and newspapers, TV programs, hundreds of podcasts and books. But it was like, do we shut down? Do we stop doing what we're doing? Or do we carry this forward? Are there more seniors to help? Is there more work to be done? And we got together and we realized, oh, yeah. The best thing we could do to honor him is to carry that forward. And my dad was a really cool guy, truly one of the best. But, you know, something that meant a lot to me was when Robert Kiyosaki pointed at him from across the room and said, hey, that's the RAL guy. And he ran over to my dad and he said, tell me more. I see that senior housing is the best and safest place to invest. I want to know everything and you're the guy to go to. They became great friends on the Real Estate Guys radio show cruise and met up again at the New Orleans Investment Conference, and he started coming to our national conventions. Roberts invested over $100 million in a big box facility out in Scottsdale, Arizona, not far from where my care homes are. You see, his book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is about getting out of the rat race. It's about stopping that nine to five slave work and starting to find opportunities that will get you to cash flow in good times and bad. Now, you do not have to invest $100 million in this, right? That's how Robert wants to play and good for him. But this is about you today. How much do you need every single month to cover your personal monthly expenses? I mean, when you think about it, the house, the car, the kids, the food, the fun, all in. If you had a check coming in every single month with this dollar amount on it, you could... Spend time with who you want, donate to what you want, buy what you want, quit that job, do, what is it? What is that number? That's your freedom number. And I talk about this subject all across the country and I get to work with incredible investors like you all. And the number one response I get is $10,000 a month. If I just had a check for 10 grand a month coming in, I could take a deep breath. I could relax. Now, if your number is more than 10 grand a month, that's okay. Because just one residential assisted living home can get you there. One. So if you need more, we're talking about two, maybe three properties. That's it. Not hundreds of doors, not a ton of buildings. That's it. One, two, three properties. And I'll show you how we do that. But why would you want to invest in residential assisted living? Well, you've seen the unstoppable silver tsunami of seniors. You can tell that the demographics, it's trending in that way, right? The timing, it's a 20-year wave that's starting right now. If someone gave you a crystal ball in 2008, might you have played differently? Probably. This could be that crystal ball because it's inevitable. You literally are going to deal with this, but at this point, you have a choice of how you want to deal with this instead of like me and my family, where we were thrust into this. You know, Meg the Stallion went back to Texas Southern University to learn how to open an assisted living facility. Why is a rapper getting involved in senior care? Maybe she sees the trend. Tracy Tudor was just at our national convention. You may recognize her from Bravo's Million Dollar Listing Los Angeles. She is investing in these. She's seeing what's happening in the luxury real estate market out in Los Angeles and saying, I see the trends and I want to know more. And she came out to share with our students just like you. Tyler Perry launched a TV show called Assisted Living. It's kind of the new age golden girls, right? He's bringing it to mainstream media. Jonathan Goldsmith, or as you may know him, the world's most interesting man from those Dos Equis commercials back in the day. He's one of my father's great longtime friends, and he invests in these homes, and that's pretty cool. Last but not least, Jimmy Buffett, he's opening Margaritaville-themed retirement communities. I mean, I'm not even the biggest fan, but I would live in paradise with Jimmy, dr drinking margaritas all day. That sounds like a, a pretty good time. I, I think so. So a lot of you, I heard, are investors in single-family homes, and so I want to go through the different options with you guys on that. Obviously, you can always do a fix and flip. You buy a home, you renovate it, you sell it, you make that 20 to 100K one time, but as soon as you sell it, you're out of the job. You've got to get another one and do it again. 
and another one and do it again. And that sure looks like a rat race to me. So it is an option, but I want you to know this is not cash flow. This is cash now. Now, single family rentals, this is cash flow, right? You have a home, you maybe have a family living in it or a group of students, whatever that may look like, a couple hundred bucks a month. You're going to need a lot of doors to get to your freedom number. So uh, uh, unless you're prepared to be owning 10, 20, 50, 100 doors, which I know many people who do do that, each door comes with tenants, toilets, potentially unpaid rent, drama, right? It's a lot of work. It's a tough industry to be in. Group homes, maybe you have a heart for those who have clean, sober recovery needs or justice involved or foster kids who've aged out of the system, developmentally disabled adults, whatever that may be, group homes is a great way to cash flow a little bit higher at $1,000 a month or more. And if that's what your heart is into, this is a good opportunity. Airbnbs, I love to stay in them. And if you follow us on Instagram or TikTok, you may think I hate them because I'm bashing them all the time but I stay in them almost once a month. I, I do love a good Airbnb, but even though the cash flow is high, you've got companies like Marriott coming in, buying up entire neighborhoods, turning them into Airbnbs. Do you think they have more power, resources, staffing systems than the solopreneur like you or I? Oh yeah. And then you've got cities like Atlanta, San Diego, Las Vegas, Scottsdale, shutting them down saying no more can you do this here we're implementing all of these rules that make it impossible for the owners to be profitable so do i think it's the safest place to invest in our current economy absolutely not and with all the rules and regs coming i think it's something they're calling it uh what air air being bust like it's it's getting kind of scary out there I still want to stay in them. I don't want them to go away, but owning and operating a residential assisted living home, bringing you in $10,000 a month or more. To me, if I had one single family home and I had to decide what to do with it, that sure does make the most sense. Proverbs says, he who doesn't look ahead remains behind. And this is either going to be the biggest crisis or the biggest opportunity of our lifetimes, depending on how you play. So what is residential assisted living? Simply, it's a group home for seniors that provides assistance with the residents' activities of daily living, ADLs. Anything you do from the moment you get up out of bed to the moment you go to bed, bathing, showering, eating, brushing your hair, brushing your teeth, taking medication, all of those things, seniors need help with at this point. It is not a Brookdale, a Sunrise, an atrium, a big box commercial facility with long hallways and impersonal staff, massive food halls where your senior is just a number. It's also not Golden Girls, right? Four mature women living in a home who need minor help with landscaping or changing a light bulb. This is more independent living. So that's not what we're referring to either. What we're talking about is a residential home in a residential neighborhood, a single family neighborhood, typically one story, but they can be multi-level. I've got plenty of students with two and three and even four story homes, adding in a chairlift and an elevator will get the job done. These homes are in upscale settings, beautiful neighborhoods. When we look inside, the floors are smooth and clean. There's sitting space. The furniture is age appropriate. Inside the bedrooms, there's beds and dressers and nightstands, tables, just like you or I may have. And the bathrooms, they're senior safe. They're accessible for those seniors. Who's living in the home? None other than our adorable seniors just living out their golden years. And we celebrate everything in the home from 4th of July to St. Patrick's, birthdays to Valentine's, Christmas, you name it, we're celebrating. When we talk about do good and do well, you know, I'm going to get into the cash flow in a second, but I just want to, to ask you guys this because many of you are real estate investors. Have you received a check from someone you've been renting your home to for six grand and it's wrapped in a love letter? Probably not. But in residential assisted living, I get 10 of these a month. You see the families, they thank you. They, they feel good about what you're doing. They appreciate you because you are allowing them to be a daughter or son. Once again, you are giving their senior the best of the best care that money can buy. And they're thanking you as they write you that big check. But what do you really want? Do you want to feel good about your investments and be proud of the work that you do? Do you want to have enough income to live the life you've dreamed of, to stop settling, stop working overtime for not enough pay? Or is it time that you're ready to leave a legacy for your family, grow appreciating assets and true, true wealth? 
You see, the facts and statistics are there's 76 million baby boomers, 10,000 people a day turning 65, 4,000 people a day turning 85. 90% of seniors want to stay in their own homes, but 70% are going to need daily care for an average of three and a half years. You know, I'm not the only one who thinks this. Harry S. Dent, New York Times bestselling author, says the opportunity of our lifetimes in real estate development and investing is likely to be in nursing homes and assisted living facilities. Now, as we're going through this, I know that some myths and misconceptions might be popping up in your mind. And I want to address these really quick. Are you going to have to work in the home? No, that's not what I do. That's not what I want to show you how to do. I want to show you how to work on the business, not in it. The liability, will it be through the roof? Nope. It's about a dollar or two per day per resident. It's a line item. And when you come to our training, we hook you up with the best of the best liability insurance agents who know exactly what to do and how to protect you. Did all the seniors die from COVID? No. Unlike what silly people on social media want to say, there's still plenty of opportunity. We are currently 1.3 million beds short and the silver tsunami hasn't hit the shore. When we talk about supply and demand being off, this is insane. It is so off, it's crazy. You can't find good employees. This one's just not true because to me, it's about being a better employer. When surveyed over the last two years, 70% of people who left their job said they did not leave for more money. They left because they didn't feel appreciated. It is time for us to change the American culture of our work environment and start loving on the people who work for us, start caring about them, start treating them with respect and paying them a, a, a decent rate. So when you follow our tips and tricks, you're not going to have trouble with this. Like our student Deidre out in Connecticut, her home's been open for two years and not once has she had a caregiver who left her. Do you need medical experience? You don't, you're not working in the home. You're not licensed to work in the home. Although if you are a doctor or nurse, I wanna show you how I can make that a feather in your cap. An HOA won't let me do this, eh, just not true. Because of the Federal Fair Housing Act, which is a federal law, it trumps any city, state, county, neighbor, or angry HOA that tries to tell you no. And we created the REL National Association that's there to protect you, to help you work through anyone who tries to oppose you. Seniors can't afford this. It's just not true. They're paying through Medicare, Medicaid, the VA, long-term care insurance, using their own cash IRAs, investments, selling their physical properties and using that capital to pay for this, or they're relying on their adult children. But there's a lot of ways that the money is coming up to pay for this home care and assistance. At the end of the day, it's a single family home being used in, as a business opportunity. So what are the three smartest options for you today to participate? Number one, you could own the real estate and lease it to an operator. We call this being a preferred real estate provider. You could get twice the fair market rent with a long-term low impact tenant with little or no maintenance. What you have to do is purchase the home, renovate it, get it licensed, and then you lease it to an operated operations company who's going to not lock in a one-year lease with you, a three, a five, an eight. I've even seen up to a 10 year lease on these because they're trying to establish roots. They're trying to start a business, build a brand and a reputation. They don't want to be kicked out. And when I say low impact or little or no maintenance, there's no teenagers punching holes in the wall. There's no motorcycles being dissected in the living room. No, 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 no. It's seniors who need help getting up to walk from one room to the other. The home is being kept pristine and clean at all times. The second way that you could participate is owning the real estate and operating the business. In a moment when I go through the numbers, that will be the category I'm referring to. That is how you control the business and make the most money. Number three, you could be a private lender or a JV partner on one of these projects. You don't own the real estate. You don't own the business. You just want to invest in someone who's going to be doing this. If you've got deep pockets and that's how you want to play, that's a great way to do this. So how much does assisted living cost? Well, you guys are coming in from all across the country. So I can give you the generic national average, but I want you to find your not your you know city average. So take a screenshot, jot this one down, genworth.com forward slash cost of care. When you go to this website, you'll be able to type in where you live and it will pop up your average rates in your area. I want you to note that there's a toggle button. 
So let's say your loved one's not going to need care for another five or 10 years. You can bump it up and see how much the cost is projected to increase. Let me tell you, it's increased over 79% in the last 10 years. And I'm pretty sure it's going to keep going up and up and up. But I know many of you might be thinking, I'm going to give my loved one in-home care. Well, the national average for in-home care is $27 an hour. So if you if your loved one needs 24-7 care, 24 times 27 times 30, that's 19 grand a month. Most Americans can't afford that because that's just the care. Plus the mortgage, the lease, the food, the activities, whatever else is there to pay for, that's a lot of money. So let's say that's too much and you say, well, I only need it while I'm at work. I'll take nights and weekends. Say goodbye to Johnny's soccer game and Sarah's ballet practice. No more are you available on the nights and weekends for book club, wine club, poker, golf, church, you name it. Say goodbye to your extra time. Now, the national average for assisted living is $4,500 per month. Genworth.com may have showed you a different national or a different rate for your area, but financially what that looks like is this. If you're charging less than $4,500, that is a below average home. And when we're charging more, it's an above average home. And I want you to stay in that sweet spot, that level three, four. Now, level five looks pretty good. Ooh, eight to 10 grand per month per person. But you have to think if someone can afford that, might they also be able to afford the in-home care? Possibly. So we want to be cautious with that. Now, I know some of you are willing to invest anywhere. You say, I live in an expensive state and I don't care, I'll invest anywhere. These are the top 10 most expensive states in the US right now. These are the average rates. DC's average rate is 69.78. They're not a state, but they're printing money over there and you can tell. Alaska up next, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Washington, Delaware, Maine, Hawaii, and Connecticut, rounding out the top 10 at 51.29. So when you're doing one of those homes that's above average and the average rate in DC is just about seven grand, your homes are probably bringing in like our student out in DC, Wade, his home's bringing in per resident 10 grand a month because that is in his sweet spot, right? So you've got to redo this chart based on your average numbers, okay? But what if you had one home bringing you in an additional $10,000 a month? Would you be more confident and secure knowing you could pay your bills easily and stay in control financially? Would you be more comfortable knowing you could provide a home for your own loved one if they ever needed care and assistance? Or would you be more fulfilled knowing you're making a difference and leaving your mark on this world? Let's go through the numbers. How can one home set you free? We're going to use national average of $4,500 a month times 10 residents. The reason we're using 10 is because every state has a maximum amount of residents allowed, and it always falls between 6 and 16. So 10 is kind of right there in the middle. And I live in Arizona, and my maximum number in Arizona is 10. So for this example, we'll use that. That's bringing us in $45,000 of monthly gross. But there's a lot of overhead in this industry. Some of these line items you may recognize, cable, internet, food, landscaping, utilities, you know, property insurance and taxes, but some of them are not so common, right? Activities for the residents, business license renewal, caregivers and administrators, vacancies, liability insurance. For the sake of me whipping through this as fast as I can today, I want us to focus on the two numbers at bottom, 20,000 and 30,000. 20,000 is if you plan to be the candlestick maker, the cook and the baker. You're going to work in the home, live in the home, wipe the seniors' bums, do it all. That is not what we do. That's not what I'm telling you to do. We're going to hire the proper licensed staff who's going to take care of all of that day-to-day -day for you so that you can work on the business, not in it. So for our example, we'll use the 30,000 as our overhead, as our expenses. Debt service in most parts of the country, you can still get a pretty nice home for five grand a month. So that's leaving us with $10,000 monthly net income and $120,000 annual net income. But I told you that's an average home and I like to do above average, that sweet spot, that three, four. And that's what I want to show you how to do too. So let's say we were charging $5,700 times our same 10 residents, bringing in $57,000 every single month. 
Our overhead stays the same because we have the same amount of residents, but our debt service increases. It's a nicer home. It's in a better part of town. It's a bigger lot. There's more private bedrooms, private bathrooms, whatever the case may be. We're going to bump it up to seven grand. That's leaving us with $20,000 of monthly net income or $240,000 of annual net income on one RAL home. Now that's pretty cool. But some of you live in states like Texas, New Jersey, Illinois, Ohio, Kansas, where you're allowed to have that max number, that 15, that 16. So let's say you wanted to do a luxury 15 bed, $7,000 times your 15 residents, bringing in $105,000 of monthly gross. Our overhead here is going to increase because we have more residents. We have five more residents. We got to pay for more care, more food, more, 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 you name it. Also, it's a luxury home. You know, if someone wants lobster and cheesecake every night, we're giving it to them. Whatever they want, they get when they're paying seven grand a month. Our debt service to house 15 people, that's going to be need to be a pretty big home. So let's have it at $15,000 a month. That's leaving us with $40,000 monthly net income and $480,000 annual net income. These are the exact numbers of our student Brian out in Livingston, New Jersey. That's pretty cool. How would you be spending that money? Would you go on more vacations with the kids? Would you quit your job? Would you do this full time? It's up to you. In our training, I don't just want to show you how to do this once. I want to show you how to scale, how to have a three pack, three of these homes within a near distance to each other so that you can share your resources. And because if you're going to do this, why not really do it? We taught this to Donald and to Linda Kelly, incredible couple, uh, their home, 12 bed home out in Kansas city, Cedric and Michelle. He said, I'm making more money in my one home in California than I was as an anesthesiologist. My whole life's changed. I'm providing a huge solution to my community. I'm doing you a disservice if I don't give you the same opportunity that we gave to Cedric and Michelle to become financially free off of one home. That's pretty crazy. Ogita and her family, they opened four homes since they took our course. She's out in Florida. Very, very cool. Ryan, he's doing the leasing method. So he's leasing the home out to someone else. And he said, my vision is to open 50 luxury REL homes, earn the best reputation around, package them up and sell them to the private equity. I can't believe I didn't get started sooner. We're on home number nine. It's pretty crazy, you know, student after student after student, Jessica and Mark, a father-daughter team, just like me and my dad, they said, we took the course. We now have two homes up and running. Thank you for the support resources and encouragement along the way. We gave them the roadmap to success when they left class and it showed them step-by-step -step how to open their home so that the information given at class didn't just fall on deaf ears. They had that roadmap to guide them through. The real question is, will you be our next success story? I can talk about other people all day, but this is about you right now. At this point, you have three choices, right? You can have a men in black moment. Flash. Forget everything we talked about. Pretend you don't know the silver tsunami's coming. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting the same results. And I wish you the best of luck. Two, you can say, I don't need you. I'm going to go to YouTube University and DIY this and try to figure it all out on my own. Again, I wish you the best of luck. Three, you can hire me and my team and let us help you build the life of your dreams. I want to share with you about our three-day training. I've mentioned it a little bit here. It's a training that we host about every six to eight weeks. It's in Phoenix, Arizona. This is a training where we go through step-by-step step how to start, own, and operate your own care home, literally teaching you all about finding the home, funding the home, filling the home, memory care versus assisted living, how to hire your caregivers, how to train and retain your staff, how to give tours and market to fill the home and find those seniors, how to purchase an existing home, how to build one from the ground up, how to convert a regular single family into one of these, how to find all those state-by-state -state rules and regs, how to get licensed, there is a lot to learn. We go through it step by step so you feel confident and comfortable when you leave those doors to be able to go open your own home. I'm the lead educator there with you that weekend, but this is my staff. They were all past students in the class, just like you might be. They went out, opened their homes in their prospective states, and they're back to teach and train you. I want to show you how to do that. We're going to teach you how to find the best opportunities for RAL in any area, how to determine if a property is right for this, how to attract the investors and find the right team, how to fill your home quickly and do it all with or without your own capital.
This training, typically $9,997. Recently, I've been working with the team at Royal Legal Solutions, and we said, we've got to give them a big discount. We've got to make sure that we're bringing it down as low as we can. The very discounted price for you guys today is $3,997. And I only have one rule. If you have a business partner or spouse that you'd like to bring with you, I'd love to welcome them there. But it's the BBB rule. They've got to be your partner in bed, blood, or bank account, okay? No rubbing elbows with a stranger and saying, let's split the fee. They've got to be a legit business partner. Now, if this cost got you one RAL home that would set you up for the rest of your life and provide a home for your loved ones if they ever needed care, and it was cash flowing you 10, 20, 40 grand a month for the rest of your life, would it be worth it, that 3997 Oh, all day. So to give you that opportunity, because I know I got to wrap it up and then I'll stick around to answer some questions, but you guys can go to ral3day.com, but you've got to use this promo code RLS for Royal Legal Solutions, all caps RLS. That's going to get you down to that discounted price point, that major $6,000 discount. Um, I want to thank you guys for letting me be here with you and just sharing with you guys today. I had a lot of fun and I'll definitely stick around for any Q&A that you guys have, but I hope to see many of you in class soon. So thank you guys so much. All right. Have you wow. seen anything good in the chat, Tammy? <laughs> thank you so much for that. My mind is blown. I'm so oh, blown good. away by this opportunity. So I'm really excited about it as well. Um, Let's see, ha, does anybody have any questions? You can jump off of mute and uh, and say them if you'd like, or if you'd rather you can put it in the chat and we'll take a look at it there. Yes, anything you guys have questions on, don't hesitate to ask, happy to answer anything for you. Being a private lender. So Jamie's asking, can we speak more about being a private lender? So every deal is going to be different, but there's some people who'll be looking for accredited investors and they might want, you know, as low as a hundred K all the way up to a couple million. It totally ranges on each deal and they can be worked out very individually. But if you are someone who's an accredited investor, Jamie, and you want to connect with us, um, I'm sure Tammy can connect us after this. If that's something that you want to be in touch with our students in that regard. Mark is asking, what construction types do the renovations fall under? Still residential or does it get into the commercial grade? It is still residential, it's zoned residential, and you want to keep it that way because once you branch over into the commercial, you've got a whole different set of rules and regs that you've got to follow. So to keep it residential uh, is a lot easier. Email address, yes. Yes, I will drop my email in here. That's actually just what I was typing, literally. Do, 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 to everyone. There we go. Isabel at ralacademy.com. And if you guys have any questions or things that come up later as you're going through it, feel free to reach out. I'm available to you and very grateful for this opportunity. I don't have another one right on top, but you know, I could probably pull something up or we could talk about, I know some of you live in states where you may have only six beds, right? So six residents who are allowed to be in the home. And I showed you 10 and I showed you 15 but let's see if I can pull up something that has a six bed. Do, do, do. I, I think if you're in an area that has, let's see if this one has it. If you're in an area that allows for only six bed, I would lean the luxury route. So I would be charging more. And I think that the best way to do that is you also have to remember the cost of the real estate is probably going to be a lot less um, because it's not as big of a property. You know, in most of these homes, they want private bedrooms, private bathrooms. So these are pretty big properties. 300 to 500 square feet per resident is a good measure to aim for, right? So um, 
Catherine, is there an average startup cost from purchase to running someone should think about? I know real estate varies in different businesses. Yes. So depending on which of the four routes you get into, Catherine, if you are buying land and building a custom home from the ground up, that could take you one to three years, and it could be uh, uh, one to three million. It totally ranges. It, it would be the, the cost of the land, the cost of building the real estate, carrying costs, things of that nature, right? If you're buying a single family home and converting it to become, that's the cost of the real estate plus the renovations plus your carrying costs. So that also ranges depending on your area, right? And then how much renovation needs to be done. Are you adding on a 3,000 square foot addition or are you just chopping it up differently within the physical home. Third, if you're buying an existing business, 30,000 of these care homes exist in our country today, and 80% of them are run mom and pop style. So the person who owns it is living in the home, working in the home, and at about six, seven years, they burn out. And so there's sometimes a great opportunity to purchase an existing one, and you can usually get it for a steal of a deal. Um, so that is the cost of the real estate plus the business, and then some zhuzhing up money, right? You got to usually fix it up a little bit, get it, get it nice um, to your standard. The fourth way is leasing a home to do this. So you can play on both ends of that. You can own the real estate and lease it to an operator, right? And you just are getting your, your mortgage basically, and, and a little bit more on top of that, or the opposite. You're the operations company. You're leasing from someone who's renovated this home and got it ready to go for you. And that will obviously be one of the more inexpensive ways to get into this, but then you don't own the real estate. So there's pros and cons, different timelines, and very different price points for all of them. So I know that's tough. Thank you. And David, yes, been doing this for eight years. I absolutely love it. And Liz, how did I get into this business? It's because my grandmother needed the care. And so we, uh, you know, we, we, we got thrust into it. We were forced into it. Alex, did you have a question? I do. I want to address if your company provide a turnkey, uh, a full uh, management services for an existing adult family home? So we do not, but there are franchises that do, but it'll be about a $250,000 buy-in. And then you're going to pay them about 30 or more percent of your profit every single month. Um, but they will do something like that with you. And I can connect you with companies like that, if that's something you're looking into. My method is more, you pay for the education. I teach you everything you need. So you can go do this times 10. Our, our students in Colorado, Mitch and Jen, they own 25 of these homes. I don't make any money off of any of their homes. This is what they do now, you know? And so that's what I want to do is teach you how to scale this. But if you want to be super hands-off, more franchise model and let someone else do the work, you can absolutely do that. You're just going to pay a lot more than you'd pay me. Copy. Are there states that are not residential assisted living friendly from Katrina and others that are more friendly? So this is a great question. It's not that states are more or less friendly. It's that there's pros and cons in every state. So one of our students, Mandy, she was the first home, the first RAL home in the state of Rhode Island. So there was no rules and regs. We had to work with her and the state of Rhode Island to literally create the rules to put those into, you know, into action. And then you've got states like Arizona, where we have 3000 of these care homes in one county. So yes, it's easier to get it up and running in Arizona, but I have way more competition than Mandy has in Rhode Island. She's one of one, you know, she's got a waiting list out the wazoo. The state is begging her to open more. So it really ranges. There's pros and cons to everything. Just because the state is easier to do it in doesn't mean you want to do it there right? It, now it's it's about having that really high marketing budget and how are you the best of the best? How do you separate yourself? And David, I don't know how, Tammy, is it okay if we leave the promo code running like till end of week, end of event? Is there any time frame on it? I think you're still, you're muted. Is that better? <laughs> yeah. There we go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. As long as you want to run that uh, promo that would be wonderful. So, okay, cool. Yep. You should be good, David. If you need a little bit of time, I'll leave it up for you. 
I know we have a class coming up the first weekend in December, and then we have a January date. And if both of those don't work for you, that's okay. Feel free to get registered and then we can send you all of the 2023 dates because we have them all until December of 2023. So there's plenty of options there for you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see some of you guys in class and hear from some of you via email. If you guys need anything, don't hesitate to reach out.